Hey everyone, how you doing? Um, I've seen a few people have done videos, people I watch, on, on the uh, coronavirus or COVID-19, whatever you want to call it. Um, I did one last night and I was going to, I uploaded it and I was going to post it today, but more has happened and I've rethanked it. The other one was just kind of flying by the seat of my pants and this one actually made a, some kind of notes just talking points to go over that I wanted to go over last one, but never got around to. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, for the most part, I've been one of those people that thinking, oh, this is just that, it's not that serious. It's more people die of the flu, more people die of obesity and heart disease, blah, blah, blah. I was kind of blasé about it, but things are starting to get real. Um, I know there's still a lot of people that are still saying, oh, it's overrated. It's just all panic. It's all the news media bullshit. It's real and you're going to see it. Um, anyway, enough of that. You you can think this is all a hoax and the media is blowing it out of proportion all you want, and that's good. Hey, I, I believe me, no one hopes you're right more than me, but I don't think you are. And the fact is, preparing for it isn't going to hurt you. Nobody ever said, gee, I wish I was, wasn't prepared. Uh, lots of people have said, gee, I wish I was prepared. So... You know, there's no harm in preparing for things. Don't be a dick. Don't hold like 3,000 rolls of toilet paper and all the hand sanitizer in your city. Don't do that shit. Um, anyway, so I'm going to start off with one of the things that made me want to redo the video. Don't touch your face. You're not supposed to touch your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth or anything and scrub the hell out of your hands. My hands are clean. They're spotless. They're dry. I've washed them so many times. It's stupid. Um, anyway, back to where I was starting with. Uh, Justin Trudeau did an announcement today. Um, he's been in self-isolation at his home in Ottawa. Is he in Ottawa or Quebec? I don't know. I don't know. I don't care. Either way, he's been there in a self-isolation for a while. Um, so we had a press conference today. The press conference, the podium, was literally nine steps out his front door. Literally. I'm not exaggerating. That's it. All he had to do is walk out his front door down a couple steps and he was there whole world waiting to see what he has to say. Um, 45 minutes late, he comes to the podium. 45 minutes late, uh, I gave up. I didn't watch it. I, I caught what was bits here and there in the news. As usual, he says, sweet F all anyway. I mean, I've never seen a man that can say so many words that don't mean a thing. So he's basically said that, yeah, we need to take this seriously now. People need to self-isolate. Um, businesses need to close if they're non-essential. But he hasn't mandated any of this, nothing. This is basically even travelers coming in and arriving at airports and crossing the border, which I'll get into. He's just telling them, you know, you need to self-isolate for 14 days, self-quarantine. We're not going to make you, but, you know, please do it. Of course, who wouldn't do that, right? Yeah. Anyway, so what he did say is we're closing the, all our borders to people that aren't Canadian citizens except for people from the United States. This is, this is a big mistake. Um, nothing against the United States. I love the United States. It's a great place. I go there for vacation all the time. Um, I have friends and family there. Um, you, the United States are, are more like Canadians. We, we're more alike than people know. Um, but leaving that border open is a mistake for Canada and, and the United States. Right now, all countries should be closing their borders and taking care of their own until this is under control. The cross-border traffic from, you know, like, like Mexicans coming into the United States, can, it causes a problem. You don't know what they're, they're treating. And right now, my point is there are more cases of COVID-19 in the United States, particularly the border states along Canada's border. Washington has the highest con concentration of COVID-19, and that just happens to run along our, our British Columbian border right now. Um, people are crossing the border. Uh, I read today that there's the peace bridge that goes over from the United States into Canada. There's a 20 minute wait, at, wait for Americans coming into Canada. There was no wait for Canadians going to America. Um, that doesn't mean Canadians are any smarter or anything. It's just the way it is. People need to be tested. Everyone coming in. People coming into the airport. They had said, oh, you know, we've got advanced screening going on at the airport. There are people on the news that flew in from Italy. Italy that has been locked down completely, people being forced to stay in their homes. People flew from Italy, landed in Edmonton, where I live, Edmonton, Alberta, 
and the only screening they got when they landed is they were directed to a little pedestal with an iPad built into it with two questions saying, do you think you have COVID-19 or do you cough? Whatever it is, two questions. Do you answer no? You're good to go. You're on your way. Answer yes. I don't know what happens. They come throw a net off over you and drag you away. Whatever. I don't know. I don't care. Um, also, those questions were only asked in English and French. French is stupid. Who cares? The people in Put it in Italian, put it in Chinese, Japanese, um, Taiwanese, Tagalog, any any language. Put them in all the languages, for God's sakes. So that, those are completely inefficient. And some people were on the news coming back straight from Italy. There's a flight from China arrived at 7.30 this evening to Toronto's Pearson Airport. Um, none of them were checked. They're supposed to be screening these people. None of them were screened. They were on the news. None of them had their temperatures checked. Um, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Set to go free and were said, you need to self-quarantine yourself for a little while. No enforcement. Anyway, so that's stupid. The borders need to be closed. Canada needs to close its border to the United States, and the United States needs to close its border to Canada. It's in both our self-interest. Okay, now enough of that. Now back to the hoarding issue. People are hoarding toilet paper, hand sanitizer, and food. There's people all over that can't go go and get this stuff right now, and, and there's no need for anyone to have a thousand rolls of toilet paper and 50 bottles of hand sanitizer. Hand sanitizer, you need one bottle of hand sanitizer in the door pocket of, say, your truck, and one in the cabin, one somewhere else, will last you over a year. A year. Come on. While you're at home, you don't need to use hand sanitizer. While you're in most places, you don't need it. Wash your hands with soap and water. You know, whatever. The food, okay, you want to hoard food. Hoard as much as you can use. Uh, basically, what, what I'm getting down to is if you're going to hoard stuff, hoard the stuff that you need in the amount you can need. Not what you figure you can sell on Amazon or eBay or here in Canada, Kijiji or Facebook Marketplace for an insane profit. Thankfully, Facebook Marketplace has cut out all ads for um, thermometers, um, hand sanitizer, toilet paper, and something else that's not coming to me at the moment. Um, awesome. So Amazon's cut them off, eBay's cut them off. So there's been talks of people that bought like hundreds of thousands of dollars with a hand sanitizer and they're going to be stuck with them now. That's awesome. Fuck those people. Stuff you should stock up on, though, are things like your medication, um, prescriptions. Get get enough prescriptions as much as your doctor will write for you, um, especially for children, ch children and seniors. It always comes down to children and seniors because people, even my age, I'm pushing 50 here, are relatively healthy, and I I can fight it off. Um, but But children, infants, and elderly people save them some stuff leave them some toilet paper some of these seniors they don't drive they've got up in the morning in the bus and rode the bus at seven o'clock in the morning through the snow having to ride in crowned buses full of people which we shouldn't be doing everybody's supposed to be distancing themselves um to go to the store they get to the store walk around um and again we're talking seniors some of them with mobility issues they get to the store and there's nothing there for them nothing don't be a dick you know Help out old people, give them a hand, and, and leave enough stuff for people with babies. People have stocked up on baby wipes. There's people out there that can't even have baby wipes for their kids because people have used them for hand cleaning and stuff and are just hoarding them, basically. Um, there's also people out there with immune issues. Um, you know, it could be just because of a disease. It could be because of medication they take suppresses their immune system. One of the drugs I take suppresses my immune system because I have a part of my psoriasis thing. Psoriasis is a super hyper hyperactive immune system. That's why your skin cells grow at a higher rate. They just, like if I put a cut there, within a week, I would have excess skin growing there that would flake off because your body regenerates itself too fast. It's your immune system thinks it's being attacked, so it regenerates really fast. So psoriasis is basically a hyperactive immune system. Um, so part of my medication to combat that is immunosuppressants. So. It's kind of a weird thing. I need them, but don't want to really take them if there's this going on. Either way, I have a strong immune system, so I'm not worried about me. But there are people with immune system problems that, that need these medications. Um, 
don't be a dick. But my whole thing is just going to come down to don't be a dick. Um, don't panic either. It's going to happen. What's going to happen is going to happen. Um, the, the rate of infection, these borders should have been closed a long time ago. Both Canada and the United States have reacted way too late. Way too late. They closing the barn door after the horses escaped. Um, I don't know exactly when this should have been done. Two weeks ago, probably when it first started. Of course, people are thinking, oh, it's, it's not going to happen. It won't. Nobody ever thinks it's going to happen to them. This thing that happens in third world countries. Italy is not a third world company, country, and they're currently locked down in their homes. They're not allowed to leave their homes without expressed permission that they have to apply for. So keep that in mind. And that's, that's going to be headed here. I'm telling you it is. Um, and, and the rate of infection, it just, I don't have the numbers here. I should have wrote them down before the video, but it's, you know, we can say that we've only got 4,000 cases. I don't, I'm just making this number up in my head. We say we've got 4,000 cases of it in Canada right now. Um, so we need to shut everything down. Like, I mean, shut down the schools. The schools in, in my area, in my province have been shut. Schools are closed. Public places have been closed, like government-owned public places, swimming pools, rec centers, that type of thing. They're all closed. Um, malls are limiting hours. Private stores are limiting hours. A lot of non-essential businesses are closing down entirely, uh, which is awesome. It's a res the responsible thing to do. Don't make your staff come into work so he can sit there and wash tables for some guy that can't cook at home. Essential services only, really. I mean, come on. It's better for us to suffer for a few weeks or a month, two months even, three months, than to let this get out of control and become the next bubonic plague. Remember, there is no vaccine for this. There is no cure for this at the moment. There might be. There could be one tomorrow. That would be awesome. Um, so the rate of infection, as I said, say if it's 4,000 here, it was 4,000 in Italy like a few weeks ago, and it's now closer to 40,000. That's how fast it moves. It, it, it doesn't just double overnight. It doubles, quadruples exponentially it grows the growth is crazy um, and again this might never happen be prepared for what could happen I know there's a lot of people that watch this channel that are preppers they'll store stuff for you know emergency situations shit hit the fan situation things that'll never happen possibly most likely never happen but does it hurt to be prepared no it doesn't how about all you guys out there hoarding 22 ammunition ammunition of all sorts you don't need it. You don't need it right now. You might never need it. But why not have it? You can have it. You know, so stock up on food, but don't hoard. Um, I was going to say, help others. If you've got neighbors that are old or people that don't get around, you know, family members, call them up. Um, don't go knocking on people's doors because you want to kind of self-isolate. But call people up or if you have to knock on their doors, talk to them through their doors. See if there's anything you can do for them. Um, I'm going to be doing that a bit this week because I'm, I'm about, as you guys know, I'm out and about all day. But speaking of which, I'm home today. I didn't go to work today because I woke up this morning feeling sick to my stomach and coughing with a sore throat. Um, I'm lucky enough in my job that I I woke up at 7.30 this morning ready to get up and go to work. I didn't feel well, so I thought, screw it, I'm just going to go back to sleep for a while and see if maybe I just didn't get enough sleep. Um, got up at 10 o'clock and I felt worse. So I started to get ready for work and combing my hair and getting dressed. And around 11 o'clock, I just said, it's not going to happen. I called my boss and I said, you know, hey, it's, it's, it's Bruce. I'm, I'm not feeling very well. First thing out of his mouth, stay home then. Don't worry about it. You know, stay home. Don't come into work. Awesome. I understand not everybody has the same option at work, but some of you do. And I don't know, exercise that option. Um, that's it. Just keep yourself clean, keep your hands clean, keep your distance from people. Don't panic, but be prepared. Um, pan nobody recommends panicking for anything. Um, hopefully it's not going to turn into, you know, like some zombie movie where we're all wandering around fighting for fuel. That's another thing. If you're going to hoard anything, hoard gasoline or diesel, whatever fuel your vehicle burns. Propane. Propane is great if you outdoor barbecues and stuff. Um, we've got like a little emergency prepared kit under our stairs with candles and crank radio full of batteries, flashlights, all that stuff. I've got enough lights to keep my whole neighborhood lit up. But, I mean, those are like extreme things. 
enough stuff to make it through a coronavirus scare and, or outbreak thing. Just think of the necessities you need um, and get those. But don't stockpile for the sake of, of selling, for God's sakes. Don't do that. That's just a dick. Um, gasoline, though. I've got all four cars of ours are filled right up. Thankfully, gas went down to 74 cents a liter this week. So all four cars. My The truck, the F-150 is full. It normally costs like 100 bucks to fill. It cost me 70 bucks to fill. Um, my SUV, the Hyundai Santa Fe, took like less than $40 to fill. I think the most I've ever spent filling it was 75 So it's cheap. Filled the wife's Honda. The Miata has been full since I parked it. Um, and I've also got a bunch of jerry cans full of gasoline um, that I filled before this. I just... I fill them when they're cheap and, and keep them underneath the bench in the planter outside. I don't keep them in the garage or the house, that's for sure, or even too close to the house. So stock up in gasoline if you want to hoard something. Gasoline, propane, um, uh, like lamp, lamp oil and stuff like that if you want to use the lamp, that type of thing. The emergency stuff you'd keep, but, but make sure you have enough medication, enough food and water for your family to last a month or two. Um, cat food you got pets cat food dog food bird food cat litter all that stuff don't forget about those guys um, get that stuff I don't know that's about all I got to say I'm sure there's more I'm sure there's a million things I could add to this I could probably go on for hours and hours I didn't even comb my hair today looking pretty stylish anyway that's about it um Stockpile on booze. Wouldn't hurt to have a bunch of bottles of vodka or, or whiskey laying around. Um, I've got a fully stocked bar in the basement, and I don't even drink anymore. But shit hits the fan. I'm popping open a bottle of vodka. You know, that's how she goes. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching, listening to a, a crazy man rant here and rave and tell you how to live your life. Just, just wanted to get that out there, you know, touch base. I'd like for you guys down below in the comment section to, to let me know what you're doing to prepare or what you've already done, what you'd like to do, what you can't do. Is your, are your stores out of toilet paper? Are they out of ground beef? Ground beef seems to be... Ground beef and spam seem to have went a lot. Spam, I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, let me know what you're doing to, to combat this whole thing right now. Um, aside from what you're collecting food-wise or medical wise what you're doing about your normal day when you go to work are you washing your hands 50 times a day are you not going to work are you avoiding large groups that type of thing let me know how you're handling it and that's it appreciate you taking the time this is almost 20 minutes appreciate you taking the time to watch the video and put up with my rambling late night rambling it is three o'clock in the morning here not sure if i'll be going to work tomorrow i still feel kind of lousy but anyway thanks for watching Take care of you and your family and the people around you. Just be good people, eh? That's all, all anyone can do. Don't be a dick. That's the theme of this video. Don't be a dick. All right. Take care. See ya.